Hi everybody and welcome back to Star Wars The Force Unleashed. We are now in the second of three DLC levels and once again, this takes place after the Dark Side ending. My lord, this is Captain Beres. The Emperor has instructed me to assist you as needed. Very well, Captain. Proceed. Yes, my lord. It appears that you've already discovered the Jawas. Disgusting creatures. So we're on the planet of Tatooine and we're looking for two droids. We're looking for C-3PO and R2-D2 because this takes place during the events of the very first Star Wars movie. The one that came out all the way back in 1977. This takes place during the events of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. But obviously things are a little bit different. As you remember, in the Dark Side ending, we killed Darth Vader. We stabbed him with a lightsaber twice, and now he's dead, and we've taken his place as the second-in-command, and we're half-man, half-robots, and even when you stand around in the, in the levels, uh, Starkiller actually has a breathing noise. Like, you're standing around doing nothing, you'll hear this... <laughs> it's a little bit different from Darth Vader's noise, but, um, you know, he has essentially replaced Darth Vader. And in, in the movie, Darth Vader, he didn't go to Tatooine. He took Princess Leia, he went to the Death Star. He didn't want to come back here. Darth Vader hates Tatooine. He was a slave here most of his life. And it's filled with sand. <laughs> it's rough and coarse and irritating, and it gets everywhere. I mean, can you blame Darth Vader? He would have got all that sand all up in his machinery and stuff, and that'd just be so annoying. But uh, Lord Starkiller our protagonist, he's not like Darth Vader. He likes to get his hands dirty. So he's down on the planet looking for the droids himself. I never liked that sand crawler anyway. Buh bye buddy! <laughs> Enjoy the fall! So even though we're half man, half machine, even though we're now sort of robotic and we have this breathing apparatus and whatnot, uh, Starkiller still plays exactly the same as he did in the regular game. He doesn't have any new moves, he doesn't have any new abilities or anything, he still does the same things. He still runs, he still dashes, he still does force repulses and lightning and whatnot, so the game still plays exactly as you remember it. There's no difference just because he's kind of a robot now. That's There's no difference in that. Uh, when you start these DLC levels off, your stats are already maxed out. You don't need to worry about picking up holocrons or leveling up, because Starkiller's already the best he can possibly be. His force push, strongest it can be. Force repulse, strongest it can be. His, uh, his mana will recharge and come back when he uses force abilities really fast, because it's at the strongest it can be. So you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Starkiller is, he's the ultimate Sith. He's super powerful. Anyway, folks, in order to find C-3PO and R2-D2, Starkiller turns to Jabba the Hutt. So now we're coming to Jabba's Palace, one of the most iconic locations in Return of the Jedi. And right up front, we have to take out the security robot that just pokes its head out and then you shoot lightning on it. That's really it. It's not that hard. I just face the, I just face the droid and then I push Y. Oh, 
So we weren't really invited to Jabba the Hutt's palace. We didn't exactly call him up and say we were visiting. We just sort of broke in. <laughs> it's weird. The Emperor knows Jabba the Hutt. Uh, he talked about, You go to that pathetic speck of a planet and meet Jabba the Hutt. But I guess the Emperor's not on, like, speaking terms with Jabba. I don't think he has his phone number. <laughs> he can't just, like, beam in his, his hologram in there. I'm sure in the expanded universe, Jabba and the Empire have worked together dozens of times. I mean, Boba Fett does work for both Jabba and the Empire, so I'm sure there's a little bit of a connection there, but either way. Uh, right up front, we're getting stormed with a whole bunch of Gamorrean guards, Jabba's personal guards, and you just have to kill a whole bunch of them until a cutscene triggers, so... Fry, piggies, fry! <laughs> Come! Try and stop me if you can. Spoilers, you can't. You can't stop me at all. I'm just, I'm just too good. And that's that. Now we just head to Java's throne room and have a nice little chat. The mighty and benevolent Jabba would like to offer... <laughs> the Empire seeks two droids, Astromech and Protocol. You will be compensated for any information that your spies can provide. Ano droid a Tatooine. Makuna si rakta lopa. Sir, Garandan has reported seeing two such droids in Mos Eisley. So one of the most memorable moments of Return of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker goes to shoot Jabba, and then he releases the trapdoor, and now, oh my god, we're fighting a giant Rancor! Ah! <laughs> this Rancor fights exactly like the bull Rancor did on Felucia when we were confronting Maris Brood. So it's the exact same boss monster. Although, this one's a lot easier, because I'm just gonna lift the gate, I'm gonna leave... Oh, he sees me! He sees me! DEAD! Skywalker style, baby! Although, he threw a rock at the switch, I just brought down the gate. But whatever, semantics, you know. So that's kind of funny. Uh, it's pretty much spoiled for you that you can do that if you read the achievements list. Uh, but that's kind of a fun little trick to beating that Rancor. You can just fight him normally. You can just fight him as if he's the bull Rancor from Felucia. You know, dodging his charges, slashing out his back. And you have to worry about those Gamorrean guards in the area as well. In fact, that's why I could pull that gate up in the first place. He goes for the Gamorrean guards if he gets close to them. So... The Rancor charges for me, gets close to the guards, starts attacking the guards, I spend all that time, he's distracted, pulling up the gate so I can escape. Um, so you kind of have to worry about the guards because they do attack you as well, which is just stupid. <laughs> like, when the guards fall into the Rancor trap with me, you'd think that, like, no, don't go after me, take out the Rancor or you're going to get eaten alive, you idiot. Good lord. But either way, we're now in the prison area. Jabba has a lot of prisoners, whether they're Jawas or Wookiees or whatever. He's got a lot of prisoners in this place, and uh, we can free them to get some extra help. Like, the Wookiees will help you out, the Jawas will help you out, and, well, I don't know if the Jawas will. I don't think they have any blowtorches or anything, but, uh, or grenades, but the Wookiees will at least try to attack these guys. But I am a Sith, and I do work for the Empire, so I don't really care about all that. I will kill anything I see. I don't care if they're prisoners. They all die. I need to find those droids before the Rebel Alliance gets those Death Star plans and completely destroys our space station capable of destroying a planet. I must not fail my Emperor, who I am a slave to, and... yeah. This is the area where the slowdown gets really, really bad. <laughs> You got these little electric contraptions in the middle, right? And when you step on them, 
they shoot electricity on you and damage you big time. So you actually have to grab it with the force or shock it with the force and then rip it off and throw it at the other guys so that it doesn't shock you. You can actually shock it yourself with electricity and if there's an enemy standing on that platform it will damage them. Uh, but because of those platforms and because there are so many doors and prisoners and enemies all in this hallway, every time I've done a test playthrough of this hallway, the frame rate always goes super slow. This, this hallway always has bad frame rate every time I play it, so I don't know what to tell you, but, uh... The Gamorrean guards are kind of annoying. They have beefy health bars. Really beefy. Like, the guys operating the turrets, the guys with the blasters, they're they're just like stormtroopers, you know? It just takes a couple lightsaber swings to bring them down. They're not so bad. But the Gamorrean guards, oh, their health bar is big, their health bar is beefy. You impale them with a lightsaber, it doesn't kill them. You have to go in for a second stab just to kill them. And those are the strongest stabs, by the way. Those aren't just, like, regular stabs. Gamorrean guards always have beefy health. I feel like that's a prerequisite of Star Wars video games always. Whether it's Super Return of the Jedi, uh, Lego Star Wars, I think Star Wars Bounty Hunter on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox, etc. My lord, were you able to locate the droids? The droids are in Moss Eisley, Captain. Very good, my lord. We shall dispatch a squadron. You will do no such thing, Captain. I will retrieve those droids. Yes, my lord. Uh, of course. You know, Starkiller, you could use backup. I'm just saying. <laughs> this is another memorable room from Return of the Jedi because in one of the rooms, you saw that they tortured droids. They tore apart this guy with this contraption and this one droid they have upside down and then they just, like, burn his legs and he screams. <laughs> I didn't know droids could feel pain, but apparently they do. And you get an achievement for uh, stamping that guy three times with those super hot devices. Apparently it hurts droids. I don't know. And yes, I just engaged in torture. This is a very controversial video game, clearly. Uh, Jabba's got one of those Iron Man stormtroopers, the Purge troopers. So are they like all robots or is there a guy in there? The sound effects with this guy is kind of different, but it still fights exactly the same like any other Purge Trooper would. So I don't know how these things work. I don't know if they're just fully robotic, or if there's a guy inside the armor that's actually driving it or whatever, but, uh, you know. It's still nothing we haven't really seen before. There's no real enemy types in this game that are super over-the-top crazy from the main campaign. I, I talk about the Gamorrean guards having lots of health. Uh, but they're not, like, super hard, you know? It's not like they have blasters or anything. You can generally see Gamorrean guards coming and then push them with the force and knock them out of the way. It just takes a lot to bring them down, so that when you're surrounded by, like, three or four guys, you can't just, like, slash all of them and drain their health really, really quickly. It's like George Lucas is telling everyone who makes a Star Wars video game, uh, Gamorrean guards are kind of uh, the, the healthiest alien race in the Star Wars universe, so uh, they're probably going to take a lot of, a lot of stuff to kill. You're gonna take a, a lot more punishment than, uh, than stormtroopers would. So, uh, you know, make sure that uh, Gamorrean guards uh, take a lot to kill. And now we're in the junk area of Jabba's palace. It's filled with Jawas who still love to throw grenades at you and they're really annoying because of that because you'll just see this red glowing thing right next to your feet and then BOOM! You lose your train of thought, and you can't force grip anything, and I hate these guys. They're the bullies. They're the bullies. And, uh, if you look around in this junk area, there's actually a special guest in the room with us. Oh yeah, we're not alone. We're not just surrounded by Jawas. We're also surrounded by... Master? Is it you, Master? It is you! It's Proxy! It's Proxy, somehow on Tatooine, even though he was stabbed by Darth Vader on Corellia, which is a different planet, and I don't know how he got here, but he's here, <laughs> and you can throw him at Jawas. 
I'm sorry, Master. I'm afraid my primary circuits are still damaged. I'm in no condition to make an attempt on your life. Also, my legs are busted. Oh, well, sorry about your legs, Proxy. I don't know who cut them off, but uh, nice to see you. I need a way out of this room, Proxy. So you want to pick up Proxy and you want to drag him to this big giant eyeball. Thank you, Proxy. Certainly, Master. It was so good to work. And that's it for Proxy. I guess his power shuts down once and for all. <laughs> you can't kill Proxy, no matter how much you shock him with electricity, throw a lightsaber at him, he will never be destroyed. Even if you throw his model into the Jawa pits, he just respawns and shows up again, and... Ah, oh, it's good to see him, good to see him. I still don't know how he got here, but it was good to see him. What hit me? Ah! My health! <laughs> good lord, I'm almost dead from that damn thing! Forget the Big Bad Empire, forget Jabba's Gamorrean guards. It's this conveyor belt of death I need to watch out for. My lord, we seem to be losing it again. It appears to be jamming transmission. Anywho, there's a skiff that can lead us to Moss Eisley, so let's go and hitch a ride. <laughs> Quite a mess you made of the place. Your head's worth a lot of credits. So, I'll be bringing it back to Jabba now. Bring it on, Buckethead! So now we're taking on Vile. I mean, Boba Fett. Why did I say Vile? I don't know why I would say Vile. But we're taking on Big Bad Bounty Hunter Boba Fett, and I'm gonna be honest, he's actually not that hard of a boss fight to deal with. He doesn't really have any great techniques for handling Jedi. Uh, he has a jetpack that he's constantly using to fly into the sky until you shock and pump him full of a lot of electricity. Because as soon as Boba Fett gets a taste of electricity, uh, he might short circuit. His jetpack might go haywire and then he might go flying all over the place until eventually he lands on the ground. And it gives you an easy opportunity to downstab him and drain his health really, really quickly. Um, every now and then a whole bunch of Gamorrean guards are going to pour in and they're going to try and attack you and stuff, but you can still force repulse them no matter what. There's still lots of explosive things in the hangar that you can shock to attack both the guards and Boba Fett as well. And really, he's just, he has no defense to that electricity. I just always go up to him when my electricity's full and then I just shock him and if his jetpack goes off, cool. If it doesn't, he's still dealing a lot of damage with just electricity so that I'm pretty much good. Like, uh, Boba Fett, he's not very good against Jedi. I don't know why he thought he could take me on. Apparently in the Expanded Universe he could take on Jedi's, but, uh, not me. You're done, Buckethead. I cannot allow you to do that. I have waited many years to destroy the real Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's right, folks. So as soon as Starkiller reaches Moss Eisley, he just caught Luke, Han, Chewbacca, R2-D2, and C-3PO taking off in the Millennium Falcon. But before he can get to the droids, he's got to go through old man Ben Kenobi, a.k.a. Obi-Wan Kenobi. And, uh, he's a little bit tough. He definitely has one of the most extreme force attacks in the game. 
Like, after a while, uh, Obi-Wan starts doing this gigantic force push spam, where he just shoots a whole bunch of force waves at you at a time, and that can really drain your health when you can't really counter it, because, like, as soon as he knocks you with the one, you're already falling over, and then he just pounds you with a whole bunch of force pushes that just drain your health really, really quickly. Um... You can still counter his attacks just like any other Jedi. He does have this lunge attack where he will build up energy and then he'll rush super far to where you are. And just like the Dark Star Killer that we saw in the Jedi Temple DLC, he has the ability to reverse your controls and screw up your movement so that the attack button won't be X, you know, jump might be R1 or something, you know? And, like, you'll have to get used to the fact that until it wears off, up is down, left is right, so you gotta be careful. And this place is really dangerous because you got electric panels, a laser that will home in for you and, and try and cut you if you get close to it. There's fire everywhere. I mean, this hangar is not a good, safe place to fight on, and Obi-Wan is a pretty good Jedi where he knows how to block a lot of stuff. Counterattacks are great. Shooting electricity to him is also great because you always get into some kind of struggle and then you can just, like, push him over. And if you do actually connect electricity to Obi-Wan, uh, he's not going to be doing much. He's just going to be standing there taking it until your electricity wears off. So, uh, he is susceptible to electricity. What enemy in this game isn't? reach that ship what the hell <laughs> oh yeah there's two phases to this fight once you kill obi-wan's physical form his spirit tries to attack you i didn't know force ghosts could actually fight i never saw that in the movies you you, you wonder why obi-wan didn't start attacking darth vader in the movie after vader cut him down I knew he said he was going to get stronger than I could possibly imagine, but I didn't think he could still sword fight. What the shit? <laughs> oh, these video games, they don't make any sense. These video games are all crazy. It's pretty much the exact same fight, although sometimes I feel like your sword doesn't really connect with Obi-Wan. Sometimes you just sort of pass through him. And I don't know if that's because he has to be set on electricity first, or if I'm just imagining it, but sometimes he doesn't always register your attacks. Sometimes he doesn't, like, react. Like, I just threw a barrel at him and he clearly fell down, but, you know. You fight Obi-Wan's Force Ghost. Run, Luke. Run! And that's the DLC level, ladies and gentlemen. That was a fragile hope. And, uh... So I want to tell a funny story. So in this level, Starkiller was wearing an outfit that made him look like a Tusken Raider, a sand person from Tatooine, right? And earlier this year, me and my friends actually went to Canada Fan Expo down in Toronto. So me and my friends went out, uh, I dressed up like Scott Pilgrim, and I met a whole bunch of people dressed as Scott Pilgrim, and I actually told some of my Twitter followers that I was going to that event, and it was fantastic, it was a great weekend, I got so many good pictures, I actually played a lot of new video games that still aren't out yet, I've played Cuphead, I played um, Mario Maker before it came out and stuff, and that was kind of fun. Um, and I met a whole bunch of cosplayers and whatnot. And one of the cosplayers I saw at the convention was actually someone dressed up like Starkiller from this particular level. Starkiller in the Sith armor getup with the sand person Tusken Raider kind of robes and whatnot. And it was awesome. It was one of the coolest cosplays I saw. And then Starkiller killed my friend. He, he choked him to death and murdered him in cold blood. And um, that kind of put a sour sour note on the whole trip. But, you know, I still had fun. <laughs> Seeing that cosplay, and the fact that The Force Awakens was coming out in December, like the new movie, 
I was super pumped for Star Wars because of that, and because I saw that cosplayer, that kind of got me in the mood to do Force Unleashed after I finished Sonic Colors. So I was like, you know what, after Sonic, I'm tackling Star Wars, because that's awesome, it reminds me of Force Unleashed, I want to play Force Unleashed again! And, uh, you know, that's just a story I wanted to share. Anywho, folks, come back next time when we go and tackle the last DLC level, and it will take us to the snowy ice planet of Hoth. See you then.